Thank you, Rachel, Brother Buddy. Good song service. If you have your Bibles this morning, turn with you over to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 11. We'll be looking at verses 24 through verse 29. Hebrews chapter 11. Verses 24 through verse 29. Begin reading with verse 24. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood lest he, he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith they passed through the Red Sea, and as by dry land, which the Egyptians, are saying to do, were drowned. I'm, I'm going to speak <clears throat> this morning on how to live godly in an ungodly world. How to live godly in an ungodly world. And I was just sitting in, in my office and then also while I was studying for the, the sermon, I'm going to speak as what God tells me to speak. And you'll find here in this sermon that Moses is an example to us to follow. And you will see that Pharaoh is a puppet of Satan. And Moses was God's message for us today by looking at his life. The Word of God presents him as an example to us of how to live victoriously in a in the midst of a society that is a flame of immorality, void of God's principles, an X-rated society, and an ungodly society. As you notice there, I want you to notice the first two words of verse 24. By faith. Moses, by faith, achieved victory in the society of Egypt, which was indeed much like our society today, demon-possessed and controlled by ungodly powers. There are some things that Moses did to achieve victory, and I know if all of us will do these same things that Moses did, God will give us a victory. Personal victory, spiritual victory, eternal victory. <clears throat> victory in Jesus can be had by us. And I can't help but just uh, listen, uh, remembering some of the conversation that we had down at the hospital uh, when Brother Jerry was being operated on. And doesn't he look good this morning? Look like this about a 17 year old over there. But we were, if I can remember right, uh, uh, your brother and your sister were talking about uh, being spiritual uh, uh, or, uh, or to that fact in our, in our services. And, and I'm just thinking, if we're going to ever overcome the cunning devices of Satan, we're going to have to be spiritual. You know where people are looking to come? People are looking for a church where there they can be some excitement. Now, I'm going to tell you something, folks. 
You're not going to bother me if you hold your hand up to the Lord and praise Him. You're not going to bother me. If you want to say amen, you're not going to bother me. If the Lord leads you to get up and shout, you're not going to bother me. The hair on the back of my neck may stand up, but you're not going to bother me. How to live godly in an ungodly world? Well, first of all, make a firm decision for God no matter the cost. Now that's something we need to hear today. We need to make a firm decision for God no matter what the cost. In Hebrews 11, it shows that Moses made a firm decision. Notice in verse 24, he refused. In verse 25, he chose. In verse 26, he esteemed. This is the way that Moses made his decisions in his life. Now, first of all, Moses refused something in verse 24. Moses refused to be called the daughter of Pharaoh. In other words, he refused to be called the grandson of the Pharaoh. Now, the Pharaoh, Pharaoh was the king of Egypt. He was one of the most powerful men in society that day. And what a choice that Moses had to make. He was heir to the throne if he wanted it. He could have been the next king of Egypt if he wanted to be. He was a prince, but he, he turned his back on all of that. Can you imagine the treasures and the pleasures uh, that the king of Egypt enjoyed? Can you just imagine what Mer Moses turned his back upon? Well, he turned his back uh, on pleasure. He turned his back on power. He turned his back uh, on, on, on prestige. Moses refused all of this because he refused to be called the Pharaoh's son of Pharaoh's daughter. Now, but not only did he refuse the pleasures and the treasures of Egypt, he, notice this, he chose to suffer affliction with God's people. Now, doesn't it seem strange to you that that Moses would, would turn his back on pleasure and turn and face affliction. But that is just exactly what Moses chose. He chose to suffer. He chose that, that what, what most of us today would not choose. Most of us say, well now, uh, if you don't mind, I would rather uh, have the pleasures and the treasures. Uh, I don't want to suffer. But Moses willingly chose to suffer affliction with God's people. He put aside the riches of Egypt uh, for the fellowship with God and fellowship with God's people. Now, as I've said, the Pharaoh was rich and powerful. You can see that by the gold that they buried with them when they died. But I'm going to tell you something. Those Pharaohs were just as dead being buried with gold as if they were buried in a wooden box. It doesn't make any difference how many treasures you are buried with. Now, why did Moses turn his back on the pleasures and treasures of Egypt? The Bible says that Moses had been doing some things. Moses had been weighing the balance of those two. He was looking at what he would have in Egypt. And, all, and then he was looking at what he would have uh, uh, turning uh, to God and, and being with God's people. But how long would he have the wealth and the pleasure and the treasures and the power and the prestige? He would have it. He could have it all. Here Moses was. Had, he could have anything uh, that the king had. And it was right there in his hands. But how, just how long would he have it? Notice there in the scripture says for a season that he would have it. But he suffered affliction with the children of God and take a stand. He took a stand for the Lord. And then how long would it last? Well, Moses knew that he would, it would last forever. You know how he knew that? By faith. I want that word faith to stand out to you this morning. We, must, we say we have faith, but do we put our faith to, uh, to action? Do we let our faith go out? We say, I, I have faith that God's going to do so and so, and then we'll sit back and, and believe he's not going to do it. Moses, by faith, uh, uh, left Egypt and took up with God's people and, uh, and worshiped and followed the Lord God. The Bible says, Now, what 
Moses did was he put the two sides, two choices, side by side. What would he have if he stayed in Egypt? Well, as I said a while ago, he would have wealth, he would have prestige, he would have pleasure, he would have treasures, he would have power, he could have it all. But it would only last for a season, and, and Moses knew that. Now, I believe that Moses had a glimmer or maybe a, a vision of Jesus preaching the Sermon on the Mount where Jesus said, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit uh, the earth. Moses put the two choices side by side, and on God's side he saw power, he saw joy, and he saw fellowship with God, Lord God himself. And the only way that a man can see such things is by faith. I'll tell you what, folks. In our churches today, we need to exercise faith more than we ever have in our lives. And we need to follow Moses and have that faith in the Lord God himself. Now, the devil is going to want you to take the short view. But the Bible teaches us to take the long view, God's view, the view of faith. Now, it would be foolish, now listen to me, it would be foolish for me to stand up here and tell you that there's no pleasure uh, in sin. For the Bible speaks of the pleasure of sin. It is no different today than it was in the day of Moses. You cannot tell people they won't have fun in sin. The devil is too smart to go fishing without any bait. The Bible even calls the pleasures of sin. It even calls it the pleasure of sin. It can seem like fun for a while, but the pleasures of sin, as the Bible says, are just for a season. Now, if you tell yourself anything else and know that there's no pleasure in sin, you'll only be telling yourself a lie. But what you and I need to see is that there are greater riches in the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me just tell you, Moses made his decision by faith. He chose the eternal. We can choose the temporal or we can choose the eternal. We can either look at the pleasures of sin uh, or we can look at the joys of the Lord. That's the two decisions uh, that Moses made. That's two decisions that you have to make here this morning uh, if you're not, uh, not saved. Uh, is you're going to choose the side of the world or you're going to choose the side of the Lord God. And there is joy uh, in serving the Lord. Do you see what Moses chose? He made a definite decision to refuse the riches of pleasure, choosing rather the riches of heaven. And we face the same decisions today. We, have, we can have victory. Listen to me now. We can have victory even though we are living in an X-rated society. But first of all, we must make a firm decision for Christ no matter the cost. So many people today are not, not considering the cost. Listen, it cost Jesus Christ his life. And it's not easy to follow Jesus. It's not easy to be a preacher. It's not easy to be a child of God. But I'm going to tell you something. Those riches on the other side, when Jesus calls us home, is far, far better than the things that the world will give to us. So how do you live godly in an ungodly world? Make a firm decision to follow Christ. Then secondly, make a firm departure from sin. In verse 27 is a word for sook. Moses made that firm decision and then he made a full departure. He had to leave Egypt. Now, I believe that Egypt is a symbol of the devil. And Pharaoh is a puppet of Satan. And Pharaoh did not want Moses to leave Egypt because Satan was influencing him. So he offered uh, some clever compromises and the devil's compromises are still with us today. But don't think it is ever good to compromise with Satan. In the eighth chapter of Exodus, it sets out what the devil, through Pharaoh, challenged Moses with. Pharaoh tried, uh, Pharaoh tried to trick Moses with four compromises. Now, I'm going to cover these very quickly. First, he said, don't get saved. Pharaoh called Moses and Aaron and said, Go ye, sacrifice to your God in the land. The land, of course, was Egypt. In other words, Moses, do not forsake Egypt. That was Pharaoh's first compromise to try and get Moses and Aaron uh, to worship God in the land of darkness, to worship God in the land of slavery, to worship God in the land of compromise. And this is the same thing that Satan is doing today to an entire generation. 
And this is why you don't see uh, in some of the generations in our churches today because Satan is influencing them. There are many churches and many so-called religions today that are offering culture rather than Calvary, education rather than regeneration. Satan is not, and Satan is not against worship. You may, uh, may think, well, what is he saying? He enjoys it, uh, if you will, uh, and just rejoice. You sacrifice it to your God in the land because he knows that if you're living that way, that you have never had a new birth and you have never been saved. Let me just depart just a minute from this. If you have never been born again, folks, you will not, shall not, cannot go into the kingdom of God. And I believe that it's time for the pastors and preachers and the evangelists to get down to the nitty gritty and tell the people who hear them to preach, you must know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. And if you come to Jesus and ask him for forgiveness of your sin, then he will forgive you and you will get up off of your knees and you will be an entirely different person. You will not keep on, on the same road. And this is what Moses did. Moses chose God and, and he left Egypt. He left all the power and the prestige and he became uh, a follower of God. Satan is saying this. Just stay out there in the world. You can go to church on Sunday. That's all right. Just add Christianity. Just tack on Christianity. Just take the things of the world. And refine them. Dress up each other. But do not abandon <clears throat> each other. That is what we call salvation compromise. And people today have fallen for this trick. Religious people, baptized lost people who come to the churches. But they've never truly been saved. And then compromise number two. Don't become committed. I think if there's one thing that our churches need to hear today all across America is that we need to be committed. So, but Satan, through uh, 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 Pharaoh, says don't become committed. Moses told Pharaoh that the Jews would not remain in Egypt, so Pharaoh proposed a second uh, compromise. And he said, I will let you go that you may sacrifice to the Lord thy God in the wilderness, only you shall not go very far away. Now what Satan is saying to Moses here is, if you must get saved, whatever you do, don't become an extremist. Don't become a religious fanatic. Live on the borderline of sin. If you must leave Egypt, then don't go any farther out than the wilderness. In a way, Satan treats many people today. He tells them, stay close. Live in the suburbs of sin. But this is living in compromise and is in disgrace to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The Bible states in Exodus chapter 11 verse 7 that God made a difference between the Egyptians and the Israelites. The Bible also instructs us, listen to this in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 17. Wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. So many people today want to see just how close to the world they can live. They do not necessarily want to drink. They don't necessarily do that. But they'll go to the bars and they'll sit there with their friends and they don't drink, but they let their friends drink. And what they need to be doing is witnessing those friends and telling them that drinking <coughs> is wrong. Compromisers who live in the suburbs of sin are doing more harm to the cause of Christ and professed atheists and unbelievers. It, 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 in the matters of faith, many times we are not able to reach the goal because we're stumbling over our teammates. But like Moses, we cannot compromise. We must commit ourselves to God Totally. I believe that there's only there's one thing that we need to hear uh, in uh, churches across America today is that we need to be totally committed unto the Lord. And I wonder sometimes how many times or how much we are uh, committed uh, to the Lord. And then compromise number three, don't believe in household salvation. Moses and Aaron were brought to Pharaoh again and he said to them, 
Go serve the Lord your God, but who they are, who are they that shall go? And Moses answered, We will go with our young and with our old and with our sons and with our daughters and with our flocks and with our Let the Lord be so with you. Let the Lord be so. Now, does no Pharaoh sound nice? Let the Lord uh, be so with you. But then he goes on to say, to deny Moses' permission to take any of the family members with him. Pharaoh's excuse is that Moses has, a, has something evil up his sleeve. In other words, Pharaoh said, Now, Moses, if you're going to be such a fanatic, if you're going to forsake uh, Egypt, if you're going to be such a double fanatic that you want to go into the wilderness, then all right, just go on. But there is danger out there. Don't take your children with you. Don't take your families with you. Leave your family with me where they will be safe in Egypt. But be assured of this, folks. The devil does not want your families to be safe. He does not want your family to be. He will allow parents to be saved, but he does not want them to take their children with them. And as a result, listen to me, we're losing a whole generation of young people. I'm glad to see these young people in church this morning, but you go to churches today and you won't see very many young people today in the churches. Our children are being left behind to die without Christ. And if they continue, they'll go, they'll go to hell because so many parents today are compromising with Satan. Make no mistake about it. Compromise is, is a compromise and a strategy <clears throat> of Satan to get the children of God of God's people. But listen to this. The Bible makes it clear that God wants household salvation. Acts 16, 31. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house. Genesis 7, 11. God says to uh, Noah, come thou and all thy house into the ark. In, uh, in jo uh, Joshua 24, 15, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. The devil wants you and me to compromise in this matter of family being saved. Let me ask you something, and I don't want you to get mad at me. But do you think that it's all right for parents to sit in the church on Sunday morning, sitting there being saved, and their family members, their children, their brothers, their sisters, or whoever is out, uh, not in church, and they're lost? Do you think that it's all right for them to just sit uh, in the church and never witness to them? Listen, we must be the example before them. We must live life before them. We must witness to them. I like what Catherine Booth, the wife of the founder of the Salvation Army, prayed. She said, Oh God, I will not stand before thee without all my children. She was more or less saying, I refuse to stand before you, God, unless, unless all of my children are here. And I want to challenge you this morning. It may not be anybody here, but I want to challenge you this morning if you have a lost son, a lost daughter, a lost brother, a lost sister, a mother, or daddy, that you witness to that person and lead them and be an example before them and lead them to come to know Jesus Christ as personal Savior. Too many are living in the suburbs of sin. And unfortunately, family members, following the example set before them, are going to perish in a devil's head. And there's a fourth compromise. He said, don't commit your treasures. You see, Satan does not want our treasures and our personal finances to be committed to the Lord. Satan knows that if he can have our treasures, he will have a part of us. I'm going to go ahead and close this, this service. I have this up. There's still more to the message, but I think you're getting the gist of it. Let me close by saying this. How can you live godly in an ungodly world? One, through a firm decision for Christ. Choosing to follow Christ, no matter the cost. We're living in a society today, Lord, folks, that, that don't like Christians. We're living in a society today that, just like it was uh, back in the disciples' time, that don't like disciples. 
We need to make that decision, a firm decision to follow Christ. There's more following Christ than what the world can offer you. And then there needs to be a full departure from sin. And you know what? If we'll do that, God will see us through. He promises that certainty for everyone who believes in the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me share this final word with you. Do you know Jesus as your personal Savior? Do you know Him? Do you know whether you're saved or not? You say, well, Brother Jackie, how can you know? First John chapter 5, verse 2. Ye may know that you have eternal life. You believe in the only begotten Son of God. You may know. There's no, no place to question it if you have come to Christ and made a firm decision to follow Him and depart from your sin and ask Him for forgiveness. Thy shall be saved. Let's pray. Father, Lord, we know we're living in an ungodly world. And Lord, we know that if we will make a firm decision to follow you and to make a departure from sin and ask for forgiveness, Lord, that you will forgive us. And you will cleanse us. And we can live in this ungodly world because you will give us the strength to live. Father, I pray that people have seen the, what Moses did. He could have chosen to stay in Egypt, been a king, had all the pleasures and the treasures of the kingdom. But Lord, he weighed those two things in the balance. And he found that following Christ, following God, is far better than anything that Egypt or the world can offer. I pray now, Lord, if anyone is lost here today, that they would come to know Jesus. In this service today, we give the invitation, and they can leave this place today rejoicing. I pray, Father, that uh, we as your children, Lord, will rejoice in, uh, in the, the message and rejoice in the Word of God, that we can see that example uh, that Moses made, and we can leave here, and we can go out and tell the lost people outside the church how Moses chose to follow God left Egypt, left the world. Lord, any decision made here this morning, I'll step back in the shadows of the cross and I'll place you to the forefront. I'll give you all the praise, all the honor, because you're only one worthy to receive it. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. What number, my buddy?